Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Lion in Me Read Aloud. And I'm going to read to you my third book in just a second. But I wanted to first talk to you a little bit about <clears throat> breathing. Because that's one of the techniques we're going to learn about in this book. So if you could, just uh, put your hand on your belly and just breathe in like you're filling up a water balloon. So the, so the chest is keeping nice and flat, but your belly is getting nice and big with each breath. Good. And I like to think of breathing nice and slow into my belly. Good. And I have this breathing ball here. It's really called a Hoberman sphere or a mini Hoberman sphere. And this is a great representation of what it's like every time we take a breath into our bellies. And then breathing out. So again, you notice my shoulders aren't moving up or anything like that when I breathe. I'm just breathing into my belly. And breathing out. Good. Breathing in and breathing out. And guess what? You actually all have breathing balls right now. So if you put your fingers together like this and you breathe in and you breathe out, you can do this anytime you want. When you're going to bed at night, if you wake up in the middle of the night because you're thinking about a million things, or maybe you're just walking down the street or you're at dinner, you're starting to get bored or anxious, just do this. And you can make the breathing ball big or small. You could try putting it over your head and see if you can bring your fingers together. Oh my gosh, that was tricky. And breathing in and breathing out. Good. All sorts of different ways to use this. Maybe you can come up with some, some of your own ways. And then the other thing I wanted to show you was my first book, Puppy Mind. Some of you may know it already, but it's about a little boy whose mind wanders like a puppy. And it's his job to get it to heal to the present, one kind breath at a time. And both the illustrators for Puppy Mind and The Lion and Me are... Uh, was done by, both the illustrations were done by Jim Dirk. And he's one of the gentlemen that draws Clifford the Big Red Dog. So if you think this dog looked a little familiar to you and you just didn't know why, that's probably it because he looks a little bit like Clifford to me. All right, so remember this cover because it may show up later in the story. All right, so you ready? Okay, let's all take a breath and wiggle your toes, wiggle your shoulders. Good. Here we go. The Lion and Me. And one of the first things I like to do when I'm reading the book is just notice, since mindfulness is all about noticing, notice what's three things that's different about our boy. And you can put me on pause if you want and talk about it with someone in near you, or you can just say it out loud. And I think I heard, yes, that he's got a tail. And yes, he's got a lion shadow. And yes, the last one, which is the trickiest one, I think, is he's got a little black lion nose. And sometimes kids say, oh, he's got a, a paw print on his shirt. Yep. And I like to look at his face, too, and wonder, what, what's, his, what's he feeling? What emotion is he feeling? And I think, I think he looks confident to me. So we'll figure out why he looks so confident. All right, here we go. The Lion in Me. May we all learn how to tame the lion within. I wonder what the lion within is. Maybe you can figure it out already. I have a lion in me, but it's not a lion that I can see. Does anyone see a lion? I sure don't. Yeah, none of those shadows look like lions to me. Good. And I also like to be mindful of what he's eating. 
What do you see that he's eating? Can you name them? Good. Milk, pizza, a cookie, and an apple. Good. Excellent. All right, let's take a breath. And we'll turn the page. Oh my gosh. It's lunchtime at the cafeteria. But look what happens. Uh-oh. Do you see that? The girl's talking to her friend and she accidentally trips him. And all his food, delicious food, goes to the floor. All right, let's take a breath. See what happens next. What does it say? It starts in my stomach first. It feels like I might burst. Uh-oh. Do you see that? What's happening? Yep, you're right. There's a little lion shadow. But he doesn't look like a scary lion yet, does he? He looks like one of those those uh, pajamas you might buy at a store or something with has a zipper, right? <laughs> look at all that food on the floor. Oh, no. All right, let's take a breath. See what happens next. When the lion starts to growl, I want to give the biggest howl. My fists start to clench and knot, and my face gets really hot. Look at that. That is one angry lion now. And look at our boy. What's going on with him? What do you see on his body? Yeah, he's angry, but how do you know he's angry? That's right. His eyebrows are down. Maybe his jaw is tense. His fists are locked. Good. Oh, and what else? Oh, that's right. He's shaking. Do you see that? But look at, he even picked up his stuff off the floor. He's a nice kid, but he just had, he's having a bad moment. He's having a bad day. Made a mistake, right? All right. Let's see what's going to happen next. Take a breath. My body starts to tighten and tense, and I lose all my common sense. My heart starts to beat really fast. I never know how long it will last. Oh my gosh, look at that, you all. Now he's obviously turning into a lion. How do we know he's turning into a lion? That's right, he's got a tail now. He's got paws now, and look at those teeth. Oh, and what has he got? He's got whiskers popping in, and what else? Oh, he's got a lion nose, and look at his ears. His ears are fuzzy. They're starting to turn into little lion ears. I think I got everything. Eyebrows are getting thicker. I think that's it. Good, yeah, he's got claws. All right, let's take a breath. When I, when the lion takes over my mind, I see red and am no longer kind. I wanna scratch things with my claws. I want to tear things with my jaws. And there's the girl who tripped him by, by mistake. Oh boy, she is not too happy, is she? And the kids, how are the kids, how are the rest of the kids feeling, do you think? Yeah, scared probably, shocked, worried, confused. All right, let's take a breath. I wish I knew the lion's name so I could grab it by its mane. You all know what a mane is? It's that big furry part around a, around a lion's head. Yeah, that's right. The lion can get so very wild, acting like the meanest child. So he's remembering what he did. You see that? He didn't really turn into a lion, but he's imagining he did. I know when the lion rears its head, when my family wants me out of bed. At 7-11 in the morning, oh my gosh, that is early. And look at that. How are the kids feeling? And the, and the, and the, I'm not sure if she's the mom or his auntie or grandma. We don't know. We have to just guess. Oh, and do you all see the lion? Where is the lion? In the what? 
in the mirror. That's right. All right, let's turn the page. Take a breath. Another time the lion gets in a huff, if someone tries to take my stuff. Do you see the lion? That's right, it's in the puddle. Do you think he'll uh, let him, uh, him share the ball? Doesn't look that way, does it? What do you think the lion's name is? If it's an emotion, what emotion does the lion represent? Oh, I think I heard it. Mad or angry? Yep, let's keep reading. I think I know the lion's name. It's anger that I have to tame. When anger starts to growl and rage, I try to breathe and say, behave. And look, you all, look what he's doing. He's doing his breathing ball breath. Do you see that? That's right. He's trying to calm down. Cool. And look at these lions. They actually don't look so scary anymore, do they? They look... They almost look like big kitty cats. Yep. All right, let's take a breath. When I feel anger start to roar, I take a deep breath and count to four. Let's see what happens next. Anger can calm down that way, getting tamer every day. Do you see all this, everyone? So the kids are teasing him. Maybe they're saying, oh, that's the kid that did that thing in the lunchroom. And you see that? He's getting angry again. His fists are clenching. He's starting to shake again. And there's his little lion tail. And then there's even a, a lion showing up in his eyes. But he takes a breath, counts to four, and that lion just gets a little bit tamer, a little bit more trained, and calms down. And he finds that he can smile at his anger. And look at those kids. They're shocked, right? They can't believe it. And they're, this guy's even a little frustrated. He's like, darn it, that kid always gets, gets uh, angry. And I'm always able to get him angry. But he doesn't give him his power, does he? He keeps his power that day, right? Good. All right, let's take a breath. Some other tricks when anger shows its face. I read my favorite book in a special place. What's his favorite book? Puppy Mind. That's right. And look at what's, what's he got next to the beanbag. That's right, he's got breathing balls or Hoberman spheres. Yep, beanbag's a nice place to just relax, isn't it, when we're feeling, we're feeling down or, or stressed. Or I can speak to an adult or take a walk, which can make it easier to talk. Yep, he's walking down the school hallway. And look, he's still a little bit angry, but he's talking it out. Yeah. That's helpful to talk things out or just take a walk, get some air. Maybe he's going to go outside onto the playground, get some air. All right, let's take a breath. If I notice anger starting to attack, I stop. I breathe. And anger shrinks back. Look at that. Look at how calm he is. Do you think he's going to make a basket? All right. Let's see. Take a breath. Anger just passes right through me. I can tame it by naming it, and I feel free. Look at that. You see the lion, the angry lion, just kind of leaving his body? And there he is, making a basket. And that angry lion has turned into a little lion cub. Something very manageable, something that he can take care of and be kind to. And those clouds will just pass on by like every emotion we ever have. We're never angry for long. We're never even really happy forever, are we? We're happy a lot, but sometimes we feel sad or 
or angry. Remember, every emotion is okay. Every action is not. It's okay to be mad, but it's really not okay to be mean. So just remember that. And we'll take a put, pick, or we'll take a breath, and we'll look at the last page of the book. Look at that, you all. <laughs> He's doing some high fives with his new friends. He's learned a few things, hasn't he? And look at that. Look where the ball is now. He's learned to what? What's that called when you when you give someone your toys for a little bit? That's right. You learn to sh he's learned to share. And look at the clouds in the sky have passed on by. Just like all our emotions. And I think this might be the beginning of a great new day for him. The end. So that was the lion in me. Um, you know, emotions are challenging for en anyone, for adults, for kids. And what I like to do as a little game after I read the book to kids is I like to, to have you all imagine getting frustrated. And it can be about something um, small, like maybe, you know, you didn't want to share your toys or someone didn't want to share their toys with you. Or for adults, it could be, you know, someone cut you off in traffic or or whatever it is, whatever the, the experience is, it's all okay. It's okay to get angry. It's just not okay to uh, lash out and say or do things that we uh, regret or that other feel, people feel bad about. So what I like to do is imagine that you're getting angry. Just notice, you know, just like the kid in the book, notice, is it showing up in your fists? Is it showing up in your belly? Maybe your face is getting hot or the back of your neck gets hot. Maybe your knees get tight. Maybe your eyebrows go down like that, that little boy in the story, or maybe your jaw gets tight. So take a breath in and see if you can just notice what that does to your body. Maybe you can wiggle your fingers. Maybe you can wiggle your toes and your shoulders. Maybe you can move your mouth around a little bit. Just see if you can kind of let that anger drop out of your body a little bit. Take another big breath and blow out. Shake your shoulders. Shake your shoulders. Let me see a smile. Let me see. A, that's it. Good. Because what's interesting about anger is if we don't actively let it go from our bodies, it can stick around. And we might wind up getting angry at someone three hours from now just because we didn't let go of that tension in our necks or we didn't shake our shoulders out. You know, animals, when they're scared, um, they shake it off when the danger's over, right? So we, I think, since we're animals too, we're just a little smarter than a lot of animals, uh, we need to remember to shake it off when we're feeling stressed. So that was the lion in me and a little bit of uh, information on how to name and tame our angry lions whenever we want. So just keep that in mind throughout your, your week. Just notice when you're having an uncomfortable feeling and see if you can take a deep breath and kind of attend to it and be kind to it like you would a friend, right? You know, maybe give yourself some self-hugs like this, right? Maybe massage the back of your neck and see if that feels a little bit better. And of course, if you need to talk to an adult or talk to a friend, um, just try to do it in a way that they can hear you rather than, um, you know, in a grumpy way. All right. Well, I'm sending you lots of kindness. Have a great day. And, uh, and I hope to see you next time. All right. Take care. Bye.